Um, would you say that modern life is having uh, an effect on the way we are interacting with each other? It is, but not in terms of making us more social, in the sense of having more friends. We seem to be stuck with the same numbers of friends, but the big difference between us and traditional societies is that in traditional societies, and you can see it, you know, sort of even in small communities now in the, in the modern developed world, it's sort of small rural communities, everybody shares in the community, everybody shares the same 150 with each other. The difference for the rest of us living in cities is that we, our 150s are kind of split up and dispersed and fragmented. So what happens is, you, I don't know, you're born in London, you go to university in Bristol, you get a job in Edinburgh, you get moved to Birmingham. And as you go around, you sort of pick up groups of friends who then sort of stay in that little group. They don't get to meet any of your other little groups of friends. They probably don't get to meet many of your family either. So your social network lacks coherence. It doesn't have that... Uh, density of interrelationships that it would normally have in a small community and has had in the past. Should we be concerned for the younger generation? They're born into an age of technology, texting, blogging, internet. There's no physical contact anymore. I understand children can go on to Facebook for hours. There's no playing in the street. Should we be concerned about the generation growing up? Well, yes and no, I think, in the sense that What's clearly very important is actually experience in face-to-face -face context. One of the problems with the internet is you actually don't see the person at the other end. And that's obviously the well-known big danger. Uh, th the problem with it is you can pretend to be anybody, if, if you like. So, you know, when, you know, you, you sort of... Uh, 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 come into contact with somebody th on the internet, you don't know who they are. I mean, they could be a, an old lady, they could be a 15-year-old boy. Um, you just don't know. They're present pretending to be who they are. And therefore, it's very easy, I think, to do things like fall in love with this person uh, after the first few exchanges. And in real life, you would get the cues back from their facial expressions and everything else, their body language, which would either tune you in or tune you out. You know, well, I'm, I'm, you know there's no, no point in chancing my luck on this one. I'm clearly going to get nowhere. And you don't have that on, on, on the internet in any form at all. The nearest you get is clearly Skype. But in, in sort of uh, the virtual world of the internet, you don't. And therefore, what you're doing is you're falling in love with yourself, this image in your own mind, not with a real person out there. And that's the big danger of it. There is another issue about whether you need to have real physical experience with people in the playground, of, as it were, uh, to develop social, the right kinds of social skills. And that could be a problem. If kids are spending all their time on the internet and that's their only experience of the social world, I think I would be worried. I don't know whether we should be worried or not, but I think I would be. Last question, Robin. How important are endorphins? I think endorphins are the drivers for everything because in the sense is it's what underpins our capacity to make relationships with each other. You know, we need something to just let us take our, let our hair down enough, be able to trust somebody else to build a relationship with them. That's all the endorphins are doing. But better to have laughter endorphins rather than... Um, you know, several bottles of wine, endorphins. Yes, well, it, it, the endorphins do the same job as that. Well, alcohol does the same job as endorphins in that respect. But clearly, the endorphins better. And in some sense, I suppose, you know, sort of morphine and other uh, opiates do the same, except that you can get addicted to them and that ruins everything uh, because you're getting the opiate high and you lose all interest in social interaction. That's what happens when you're a druggie. Uh, you don't get in in that sort of way, uh, uh, um, uh, fixated on, on the body's own endorphins. You just, you, they're just being used as this little sort of thing to ease you over the social engagement part. But at that, that's all they're there, they're there for, um, and they're much the best way to do it. So I recommend dancing.